AI is clearly not going away, and if we take the view that motion designers are going to use it as a tool, well, we need to figure out how. So in this video, we're going to do just that by testing a workflow using After Effects and AI. So after seeing how AI has progressed, my gut is telling me that we shouldn't let it do the creative heavy lifting for us. I believe we'll be doing our creative skill set a massive disservice by relying on AI and an over-reliance will lead to a decline in our own creative performance. But then what do we use it for? I think we should be figuring out how to use it for the hard labor, to do the slow time-consuming tasks. That way we can play to our strengths and take advantage of the speed of AI. So I came up with a way to test an AI workflow. The idea is to create an animation in After Effects in Gray scale and use AI to style the animation. This way we get to make sure the animation is refined and high quality, something impossible for AI, and then play around with AI to breathe some life into it. So I made this quick grayscale animation. Now let's test this workflow using Runway's Aleph model because I hear it's great at doing this and I saw this example recently which I thought was pretty interesting. So of course, despite having a shit ton of credits on Runway, I can't use the Aleph model unless I pay for a subscription because why make all credits equal if you can make more profit? Is AI actually just the biggest worldwide scam we've ever seen? Are AI businesses actually the same model as online betting and casinos? Just the saddest way to lose all our hard-earned money while simultaneously taking all our jobs? Yeah, probably. But before that happens, let's see if we can make it our tireless slave that does all our creative bidding. So to start, I've rendered out the second scene of the grayscale animation so we can run some style experiments. So I'll just upload that. Then there is the option to add a reference image and we're going to start with this reference by this motion designer. Let's add a prompt to use the image reference to restyle this scene. Hopefully that's enough to get the job done. So let's hit generate. And here is the results and it's pretty interesting. The middle line from the reference seemed to have confused the model but the rest is pretty good. This made me curious about how this would translate to the first scene which may be more suited to the style. So let's do that. And this is the result and it's actually pretty awesome, but there are some weird artifacts that would be inexcusable for a final product. For example, the way the sphere distorts here is totally unacceptable. But let's keep on experimenting and I'm going to upload all our style references to make this process a bit quicker. You'll see that some of these references make a lot of sense, especially the first three, but then I decided to put in some more left field references to see what the model would do with those. This is an experiment after all. But let's start with the second reference and hit generate. And the result is not great, especially with what I consider to be a much simpler style to get right than the previous, but there you go. So let's Let's move on to our third style frame and I'm also going to change to scene one to test this. And it's done an okay job, but I don't really like it. And that may just be because this isn't the best style for this animation, but for good measure, let's try the same style with our first scene. And it's a bit better, but it's still not perfect. And what I'm starting to see with these is that if the movement is super basic and slow, like the way the rectangles are moving, it looks good. But as soon as there is anything slightly complex and fast, like the sphere bouncing off the rectangles with the trail, things go to shit. Also, there has been a misunderstanding in the first part of the scene. It's kind of interesting though. I still haven't seen anything that could pass as a final product, but let's not lose hope. Let's use our next style reference, and this is definitely a bit of a left field reference, but I'm curious about what we'll get. So I'm going to generate a video for the second scene, as well as the first. And there's a bit of misinterpretation of the style, but the results are still kind of interesting. So now that you get the process, let's speed run the rest of these. I'm going to repeat the process with our final four style frames with both scenes one and two, and then we can sit back and harshly judge the results. Okay, so this is our first one using that paper and pencil style, and I got a say this is freaking awesome. I really like the way this looks and feels and it could almost be used as is. So I do like this aesthetic. I think it's pretty interesting but the way that this trail messes with this feeling of 3D is not great. Hmm. Again pretty successful. Not sure if I'd use the style but I do think it's done a pretty good job of transferring the style. This is interesting. I don't really like how it's flattened out these discs but I do think that this triangular light looks really awesome. So this is our second scene in the paper style and while I think this is pretty interesting. I don't think this is a style I would personally ever use. And I see that the model really struggled to apply this reference to this scene. This is probably the worst one we have. Now, I have to admit that this has actually done a pretty good job. I really like the way that these outer spheres have been rendered. Not 100% sure about the inner sphere, but these are freaking awesome. Now, I don't know why it interpreted this first scene this way, but this looks freaking great. I'm loving this kind of sci-fi feel to it. This outer text is really cool. And the glow is just freaking sexy. So, gotta say, job well done. Now, the last thing I did was repeat the above with scene three so we could create a full animation. And these are my top picks. So 
some of these results are pretty interesting, but the fact of the matter is you couldn't submit any of these to a client with the strange artifacts that are being created. So what have we really achieved today? Well, nothing, absolutely nothing. We definitely got scammed. But half jokes aside, this could be a quick way to rapidly test styles for a client to give them a rough idea of your vision before you then do it manually yourself. From what I saw today, there is also potential for testing out unusual styles. What was interesting about our generations was how AI interpreted a style, so using a unique or uncommon reference might be a way to get a unique style that you can then interpret yourself in After Effects. Perhaps in the future, we'll be able to apply a style to a grayscale animation in a more successful way, but that day is not today. And even if that becomes possible, we still need to make the animation and that requires honing our skills in After Effects. If you want to do that, you should grab the Motion Practice Quest, which is the best way to get in the hours required to improve. And if you pair it with the Pro Motion Techniques Masterclass, I can guarantee you will level up. So check those out in the description. And pro tip, if you decide to purchase both, Use the code PROMOTIONXP for 20% off. Let me know what you think about this experiment and if you know any other AI tools I should try this with. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe for more Motion XP. Yeah.